Hey you guys, it is William Colling from Movie Blogs, and I am super excited because the running order for Simi Final 2 is out. Okay, it's been out for more than a month, but things got crazy, so I didn't film this video. In any case, should we go through the 18 songs and discuss the running order? <laughs> Let's do this! All right, as ever, the normal caveats apply. Producers want to put together the most interesting show possible while also considering things like stage construction, wheeling on props, moving props off, lots of practical matters that maybe we don't think about. A good song can overcome any position. Let's just go ahead and say that. Particularly in the semifinals, we're talking about 10 songs qualifying out of 18. Whereas in the grand final, we're talking about one winner. So maybe the running order matters even less in the semifinals. In any case, let's first go through the running order. Kicking things off is Finland, the Rasmus with Jezebel. Then we move on to Israel, Michael Ben David with I Am. In third position, we're going to see Serbia's Constracta with Incorporo Sano. Then it's Azerbaijan's Nadir Rustamli, Georgia's Circus Mercus. And in sixth, we will see Malta's Emma Muscat with I Am What I Am. Now, normally, in past years, the commercial break has come after Act 6 and after Act 12, so there could be a break here. Then after that break, we would see San Marino's Achille Loro with Stripper, followed by Australia's Sheldon Riley, not the same. Then it's Cyprus's Andro Mahi with Ella. Then in 10th in the running order, it's Ireland's Brook with That's Rich, followed by North Macedonia's Andrea, Estonia's Stefan, and Romania's WRS. Earth. Again, there would be a commercial break between those two, between Estonia and Romania, based on past editions. In 14th position is Poland's Aukman with River, then Montenegro's Vladano with Breathe, Belgium's Jeremy Macaïs with Miss You, Sweden's Cornelia Jacobs Hold Me Closer, and rounding it out, finishing the show, Czech Republic We Are Domi with Lights Off. So we often talk about producers wanting to break up different genres. They don't want ballad after ballad after ballad or dance song after dance song after dance song because they want to keep the show interesting, give us light and shade, peaks and valleys. And for the most part, they've done a good job of that, I think. Going through my notes, I said Finland. This is, you know, pop, rock, biblical troublemaker. And then Israel, we have sort of RuPaul's Drag Race, yes, Slay Queen pop, very upbeat. Um, oftentimes, we talk about the death slot, slot two, and it being a boring, quote-unquote boring ballad. This most definitely is not. Third position, Serbia Constracta. It's avant-garde, high art social commentary. Fourth, we have Azerbaijan, a very dramatic male ballad. Fifth, Circus Mercus, you know, very indie pop, very out there. And then we have a huge tonal shift going to Malta, inspirational female ballad. From that, we go to the pop punk rock of San Marino's Achille Loro, you know, the sweetness of Malta to the filth, you know, the raw edge of Achille Loro. After San Marino, we get very emotional. Sheldon Riley, not the same, very dramatic male ballad. And then we switch to Cyprus, which is this very light, summery, kind of ethnic song, very regional quality, where you instantly know, okay, this is the Cypriot Greek, you know, part of the world. This is the Mediterranean cool. Um, from that, we move on to the pop, punky sounds of Ireland's Brook. And then you're mixing it up yet again with the raw ballad from North Macedonia's Andrea. Shifting yet again, Estonia, Spaghetti Western, Yeeha, Male Ballad. Then we're going to Ursin, Romania. This is like Latin-tinged dance pop. Then back to the emotions, a spiritual male ballad with Poland, River, Achman, Rebirth, Renewal, Let It Wash Away. Interestingly, this is kind of ballad after ballad, because then we have Montenegro's Vladana. This is a very emotional female ballad. So some people have said, ooh, ballad, ballad, who will win this battle of the ballads? Well, in my mind, it's gonna be Poland. Then in 16th, we switch to American R&B pop with Jeremy Macaïs with Miss You. And then Sweden, another tonal shift. It's a pop folk ballad. And then finally, coming out of nowhere, cutting through, we got this electro dance of the Czech Republic. 
So you can see for the most part, it is kind of bouncing all over the place. All right, and just so you know, voting in this semifinal are also three of the big five countries, the UK, Spain, and Germany, all of whom got zero points last year with a televote. Okay, let's take this one by one. Kicking off the show is Finland's Rasmus with Jezebel. They, of course, are singing about a biblical troublemaker. They want this to be a song of empowerment. You know, it is very in your face. If we look back to Uden Musk and Kilpailu, and indeed their stage shows on the pre-party circuit, this is loud. It's like in your face. It doesn't hold back. The lead singer, Lowry, he's like, boom. So I think it's a good show opener. This is one that will be visually safe, right? Visually arresting. Producers can count on this to make viewers want to stick around because the Rasmus have done huge shows all over the world. They will not be intimidated and they will deliver live. Writing on the Weeby Blogs website, Dennis says, The Rasmus first? That's one way to start a party indeed. Sort of Italy's RAI and the EBU telling us, Oh, what pandemic? We are back with a blast, darlings. Yeah, I totally feel that. Also, a bit of trivia for you. The last time Finland opened the show, or the semifinal rather, was back in 2016. This was Sandia. She, of course, sang Sing It Away, da 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 da, and came 15th out of 18th in the final scoreboard. Thankfully, I don't think Finland will have that fate this time. From that, we move on to Israel, Mikhail bin David, I am. Now, we described this as RuPaul Drag Race Yas Slay Queen Pop, and I think that's spot on. Throw in some ethnic elements as well, giving us that Israeli Middle Eastern feel. Um, some trivia, the last time that Israel performed in spot number two in the semifinal was 2014, when May Feingold, a huge fan favorite, one of my favorites of the year, ended up doing really poorly. She finished... Next to last, ahead of only Georgia. Um, and interestingly, Georgia is also in this semifinal. Will this repeat? Will we see Israel coming next to last again, ahead of only Georgia? Also, there's a habit of putting Israel second. They performed in second position in 2007, 2008, and 2014. And again, curious point, Tess points this out on the Wee Blogs website. It seems like they're trying to break the curse of the second places, putting up-tempo songs there instead of boring ballads. Latvia in the first semifinal, and Israel here. We often talk about this death spot, but writing on Wee Blogs, Pabandam, I'm sorry, Panda Man says, a fun fact for everyone, the death spot actually isn't spot number two. Both number three and four have a slightly lower qualification rate since the introduction of the two semifinals in 2008. Have a good day. Well, maybe not for those in two, three, and four. And Azad points out the reason there's this reputation is because in the grand final, no one's ever won from spot two. So this is a, we're talking about slightly different things here. Now in third position is Serbia's Constructa with Incorpora Sano. A lot of people are really surprised that this has been drawn so early. Jack writes, my fear of Incorpora Sano becoming another Telemovej just intensified. There's a fear that going third means it will be forgotten. Midnight Gold writes, Lithuania and Serbia both placed early on. Lithuania, of course, being in the other semifinal. But on the other hand, they'll both sound even better after the insufferable Latvia and Israel. So Midnight Gold seems to think that Serbia will benefit coming after Israel. Sir Stevia writes, 25 days ago, I thought Serbia would be ninth or something. But honestly, if they don't qualify from third position, they would not have qualified from ninth either, you know? Hope they will advance. We shall see. Death Simi in it. So a lot of things to tease out here. Sir Stevia seems to think that and a lot of people think this, that producers tend to put their favorites further along in the half, because as you know, countries were drawn into first half or second half, so there's this theory among fans that if you maybe go eighth or ninth in the first half, or maybe, you know, 17th or 18th in the latter half, it means producers think you're awesome and, like, have a chance of doing really well. We should point out plenty of countries that have performed in third have slayed very hard. Last year, Russia's Manisha, 2015, Loik Natep from Belgium. They both competed in the third slot. They both went to the final. You know, then for me, four, five, and six, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Malta. This is a section I'm not going to be so bothered about if I miss. I think Azerbaijan's song kind of passes me by. 
However, it could be really good live. I think that Azerbaijan, when they get their staging right, they really get it right. So this could be a moment. He's got a good personality. He's a lot of fun. The song for me, I just, I don't know, is a bit too much for me, to be honest. Um, but it will pop out after the sort of incorporo sano quirkiness and then the Georgia quirkiness after. Maybe he's like the safe bet for some jurors and viewers because he'll be like the high not high art because i think serbia is also artistic but he will stand out with the emotion is what i'm trying to say then you've got georgia circus marcus um you know what you could have stuck this anywhere people are going to be like huh um sixth emma muscat i am what i am you know inspirational ballad the public look the public is not going to be behind this this is not going to get a ton of televote support it's really just not However, I think the juries could save this. The juries could really push this through. As we've seen in the past, jurors tend to love Malta, and Emma has a beautiful voice, which I think matters more to juries than the public. Um, so yeah, because this semifinal is so wide open, it's really hard to make a prediction. It could go so many different ways. Uh, but Malta's going right before a commercial break, so perhaps during the commercial break, people will talk about her. It could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what they think of the performance. All right, after the break, we have San Marino, Achille Loro, stripper. He is his staging, right? He, he, he kind of, the camera just needs to focus on him. He has such an original look with the tattoos, the face, the mascara, the eyes. I'm sure he'll make a fashion statement. What goes on around him? Less important, because he's a persona. Um, then you have Australia, Sheldon Riley. A lot of people are saying they think this means the EBU thinks they will do good because Australia is like near the end of this half. The EBU has a reputation for just loving Australia. Um, I love Australia too, by the way. I love having them there. But like in comments, you often say, oh, the EBU is so biased to Australia. I don't think they're biased, but I think they recognize that Australia often has kick-ass staging and they've obviously seen the staging plan. So maybe he's got something very dramatic coming at you beyond the mask. Maybe there's a nice, some nice scenography. Then you go to Cyprus, Andromahi. So there's a lot to unpack here. Magpie asks, I wonder if performing after Australia is a cursed spot. This, of course, is a reference to the fact that Sheldon Riley has an out-of-this-world voice. So they're like, this commenter's like, oh, oh gotta go after him, you're not gonna stand out. However, as we saw in Australia, Australia had very dark staging for this. And you can guarantee Cyprus is going to have something bright and light and summery because the song has that vibe. So maybe it actually helps Cyprus to come after Australia. If Australia stays dark and our girl from Cyprus brings the light building on that sun stage, that could actually work in her favor. And also, she's got a good voice too. They have very different voices, but they're both very strong voices. Tom writes, Australia, the strongest entry of the first half is rightly in eighth position. Bella kind of responds to both of these points. She says, one, just because you come after a strong song doesn't mean you're done. Two, Australia is far from being the strongest entry in the first half or even the entire semifinal. And three, Cyprus's song is strong enough to qualify regardless of order. I agree. Uh, you know, there's a lot of question marks in this semifinal, but for me, Cyprus is going through. Then we turn to Brooke, Ireland, singing in 10th position. You could say that Brooke is opening the second half, and that's giving our readers a lot of pause for concern. Leo M said, I fear for Ireland now. I thought that might have closed the show. Yeah, I think that could have closed the show as well. It's so fun. She's got a great personality. Woo! She's got a great personality. She's been so lively on the pre-party tour. I wrote in a post recently that she looked like she had had a few drinks before taking the stage, and people slightly misinterpreted that. What I mean by that is her and her girls were ready for a good night out on the town, so they had a pre-party at home, put on their sexy boots, and got ready to slay the club, and that was the vibe she was giving. She's like, all right, I'm ready, got my money gun, I'm confident. And that is a good vibe to close the show with. Maybe producers just wanted a contrast with Cyprus, right? Because Cyprus does have this dun-dun-dun, dun-dun-dun, it's this kind of airy quality, and maybe Brooke is bringing us back to earth to the club floor. These boots are made for stomping, if you know what I'm saying. Sir Stevia writes, I predicted Ireland being 10th because I highly doubt that Rich will qualify. I am much more sure of it now after seeing I was right about Brooke's placing. Truth is, Brooke's vocal is not very good, which sucks because I really like that Rich. I think Brooke's trajectory has been spot on. She's improved throughout the pre-party circuit. She's gotten better with each performance. And I think Israel Amsterdam, our girl, you know, 
she was getting to where she needs to be. So she's going to peak at the right time, which is in Turin. She has, of course, said that she's totally revamping her staging for Eurovision. So, you know, this could go lots of ways. North Macedonia, Andrea Circles. She has a very raw ballad and she's very powerful. This song is much better live with her emoting than it is in the music videos. Um, so that gives me hope. Not everyone's so hopeful. A lot of people are pointing out she's coming very early in the second half. TZS writes, regarding semifinal two and positions, I am sorry for North Macedonia. They got position 11 for this year. They had the same position in 2006, 2014, 2011, 2018. And as you know, they have not had so much success. Then we have Stefan singing in 12th with Hope. This spaghetti Western yeehaw song has really grown for me. When I saw him in Amsterdam and people going absolutely crazy for this, I was like, okay, he's going through. There's no way he's not going through. His voice is so strong and so powerful. It fits the melody. This, yeah, I see him going through for sure. Then there's usually a commercial break. So people will be taking in Stefan like, oh yes, he was amazing. Gotta vote for that. Bah, bah, bah. And when they return, it is Romania, Urs, that means bear, W-R-S. As a me 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 Latin dance pop is 13 an unlucky number. Well, Roxanne, who sadly did not make it through the semis last year, she sang in position 13, so a lot of our readers have made much of that. I think he would pop out wherever he is. A lot of people thought Romania would be a really good show closer. I agree with that. It's very danceable, memorable. Wow, I love the big lettering on stage, like, hola mi bebe, be, hola mi... It, it, it really lingers with you and it stands out. It's fun. But this sound is so different from anything else in the semifinal. He would have popped out wherever. He could have opened. He could come second. He could come ninth. He could come... It doesn't matter. I think this will get a lot of televotes because it's just, it's just fun. It's really fun. Now we have a huge contrast. We go from Olami Bebe Bebe Be, to River, the spiritual ballad from Achman from Poland. Um, he's coming before Montenegro. So, you know, after Romania, before Montenegro. Personally, I think he's going to benefit from performing before Montenegro because he has the stronger ballad and the stronger voice and probably the stronger staging. I just think Poland versus Montenegro is no competition. Poland pops out like... 10 million times. Um, and also he's got that tonal contrast coming after Romania. Whereas Vladana, bless her, she's gonna have to come after Achman. And he's got that big old voice, really a, a strong song. So I think it's gonna be harder for her to stand up. Sir Stevia writes, could Poland actually be a non-qualifier? Surely not, right? I found out today that apparently juries never put Poland as a qualifier before, which is quite shocking. I checked the years 2016 to 2021. And yeah, Poland was never in the final with the juries at in those years at least. They got 11th twice though, unsure about pre-2016. Well, dang. I mean, if we think about it from 2017 onward, I mean, I liked Flashlight from Kaja Moss. She's a great vocalist and performer of the song. Um, you know, I can understand why the juries haven't put this in the top. Actually, Tulia, man, Tulia should have been in the, Tulia. Yeah, something crazy. Tulia deserved to be high with the juries. Um, oh. Bad Wolf Girl writes, well, Poland usually never sends stuff that appeals to the jury until now anyway. We'll see if the jury can overcome their anti-Polish bias and actually reward Poland points as they deserve. The diaspora televote will definitely boost Poland forward, but to be fair, Poland actually has a good song for once. All right, make what you will of that. Poland does have a good song, particularly in this semifinal. I don't find this semifinal particularly strong. In fact, I'd argue this is one of the weak semi weakest semifinals I've ever seen at Eurovision. Poland is going through. 15th, LaDonna, breathe. Um, okay, so coming after the vocal powerhouse that is Achman from Poland, he's literally not missed a note this entire pre-party season, I would be concerned. On the pre-tour, LaDonna has not impressed me, but at the same time, I don't think breathe is the type of song you want to hear in a sweaty, sticky club, right? Her song could elevate significantly on the TV set when you cut out the audience, when you're creating a mood and atmosphere. Because um, you've seen in her music video, she does have an artistic sensibility. So I think if they can get their camera angles and things right, this will elevate significantly. However, based on the pre-party performances, the vocals really weren't there. Um, lyrically, I just don't like this. I think lyrically it's very weak. Um, but there is nice instrumentation and she's worked with a great composer and there is something, there is something, there's some beauty in this, but it's just not meshing up for me at this point. So. I'm not confident about the semi-vinyl predicting this, but I would say Montenegro is out. 16, Belgium, Jeremy McKeze, McKeze, Jeremy McKeze, miss you. 
this is going to pop out. After Vladana, he's going to really pop. Because we go from two ballads to, you know, some kind of, kind of funky American R&B pop. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's improved as well throughout the pre-party tour. He needs to nail his vocal. And I think there's going to be more choreography. Like, in Amsterdam, the dancers were doing some stuff. We looked really, really good. So, yeah, hopefully their trajectory has continued to grow to crescendo as well. 17th, Cornelia Jacob, Sweden. Look. Sweden's going to qualify from wherever in this semifinal. In the second half of the semifinal, only Sweden has a consistent record of qualifying. Every other country in the second half, let's go through it. Ireland, North Macedonia, Estonia, Romania, Poland, Montenegro, Belgium, Czech Republic. They have a checkered past with qualification. Sweden has been good from 2011 onward. So, yeah. And also, it's one of the contenders to win the semifinal and all of Eurovision. So, like, no worries here. Josh R. says, I think we can agree Sweden is being set up for a potential seventh win. Well, not necessarily. You could argue that if you're given a really good spot in the semi-final, that producers may not let you have the same amazing spot when you make it to the final. However, it actually does not matter. As we've seen in the past, Conchita, Mons, Salvador, they all performed in the first half, I believe, and they all won. So, again, if you have the most amazing song with great staging, you can overcome anything. Andy points out that some people are uncomfortable with Sweden's position, but they shouldn't be. Um, last year, Switzerland's John's Tears, he was exactly one place behind the last song. Nikos speaks truth. He says, come on, the starting number in the semi would not matter for Cornelia. She would easily go to the final anyway. This is bad for Sweden, as they probably will not get a good starting number in the final now. All right, and now we turn to Czech Republic. We are Domi closing the show with this electro dance song. There's a lot of talk about why Czech Republic is closing. Thomas Sturley says, I honestly think Czech Republic has a great stage show plan since they are closing. Hope they can return to the final. They have never performed 18th, the Czech Republic. So this is a huge honor. New, new twist getting to close the show. Magpie says, interesting that the Czech Republic gets a good spot ending the show and a cursed spot after Sweden at the same time. Um, I don't think it's a cursed spot to go after Sweden, especially when tonally you're so different. If you also had a folk ballad and you were going after Sweden, like a folk pop ballad, maybe I'd be concerned. But like this song is so different. Czech Republic is so different from Sweden. If anything, I think it, it, it helps Sweden because there's that contrast and people are going to want this kind of electro dance. The only other dance song that pops out at me like in this instance is Romania. I'm sure there's another one, but I'm not going to scroll back. So like, no, this is good for the Czech Republic, I think. Uh, Colin makes a very good point, though. Going last guarantees you nothing. We mustn't forget the non-qualifiers of Latvia 2017, that's Triana Park, Serbia 2013, that's Moya 3, and the Netherlands 2009, I think that's the toppers. Performing last doesn't equal success. It's still the impact of the song which makes the biggest statement. Absolutely. Our girl Domi, I have to be honest, Vocally, she's had a few rough performances on this pre-party tour. Thankfully, she's improved as she's gone on. Like the most recent one in Madrid, she was coming into her own. And again, this is like with Brooke. You need to come into your own at the right time. So I'm glad she had that good performance. Because the performances before, I'm sorry, that's not going to impress the juries. However, slay like you did in Madrid and harder. And then the juries, are, you know, then you start talking about, okay, qualification. Um, I think this is the best chance Czech has had in a while to qualify. A, because it's a weak semi, but B, there's a lot of public love for their song. And so if she hits vocally, I think they'll go through. But if her vocal is like it was um, early on in the pre-party tour, it's not happening. Yu points out that only in 2014 did the first song and last song in both semifinals make the final. So those four countries are Albania and Armenia, semifinal one, opening and closing, Finland and Czech Republic, semifinal two, opening and closing. He's saying not all of them can make it. So of those four, who do you think would be out? If, you know, you believe in superstition, well, I think Albania is through and I think Armenia is through. I've heard about Armenia's staging and it, it, it's cool. It's cool. So that leaves Finland and Czech Republic. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, oh gosh. See, semifinal one's a lot stronger. 
Semifinal 2 is weaker. Finland and Czech Republic, wow. Well, based on, oh gosh, both of them have had actually questionable vocals at times. But Finland is so high impact. Girl, I'm gonna hope for the best. I'm gonna hope all these people qualify. All right, well, that's what we think. What do you think? Who do you think is going through in semifinal two? Who got the best running order? Who do you think got screwed over? Let us know what you're thinking in the comment section down below. And we will see you later. Bye!